This is a strait in California and it's called the Golden Gate. Back in the day, the people that lived here, they would have to use a boat to go between the strait. And after a while, there were companies created that built ferries and they would take people back and forth between the strait. In the year 1920, words had gone around that we should build a bridge between the Strait of Golden Gate. And we can't keep doing this anymore. At that time, building a bridge like this seemed like science fiction. Not only is this strait extremely wide, about a mile to be exact, but the west side is an ocean and it's connected to the Pacific Ocean to be exact. Golden Gate Bridge is one of the most famous bridges in history. The time that they built this bridge and the engineering that was used, you could consider this a masterpiece. Just like we said, to go back and forth, you would have to use a boat. But it's the 20th century and the automobile business is booming. And a lot of people love to take their cars in between this area. To do this, they were forced to go all the way around the bay so they can reach the other side of the strait. And this was hours worth of driving. It's the 1920s and the number of automobiles on the street is raising every day. The population of San Francisco is rising right next to it. When the city actually starts thinking about building a bridge, a lot of people criticize them and they say it's going to be impossible to connect these two lands. Underneath is a vicious ocean and it's one mile long and that is why the people at that time put a nickname on this idea of the bridge, the impossible bridge. It is good to say that at that time, the steel had been recently invented and engineers were just beginning to learn the weird stuff they can do with this beautiful metal. This was the idea of building skyscrapers in New York as well. The city of San Francisco hires an engineer by the name of Joseph Strauss and they tell him to create a group so that we can build a bridge like this. When the idea of the bridge kind of got serious, the ferry companies got worried about their own pockets. And then they would advertise everywhere that this idea is impossible and we should stop it. After his research, Strauss said that it's very possible to build this bridge. And they told him to design it. This was the first design they created. But when Joseph Strauss shows this to the city of San Francisco, they kind of made him sad because they basically told him the design is very ugly. And you could say they told him to hire a few new designers because this is not gonna happen. Joseph Strauss hires three new designers, Leon Moisif, Irving Morrow, and Charles Alton Ellis. And the bridge that everybody knows and loves were designed by these three. When the design was accepted, the ferry companies that were already upset, they got even more angry and they tried to stop the project. Another problem that the city of San Francisco faced in building this bridge is the Pentagon. And back then it was considered the Department of War. Pentagon says we should not build this bridge because it's right next to the ocean and the enemy could very easily destroy it if they wanted to. It's after World War I and wars are extremely serious around the world. Either way, they make the Pentagon happy. The Department of War says, okay, you can build this bridge, but you have to paint it like this, black and yellow, so it could be seen by Navy ships and planes. It's good to know that the city of San Francisco is extremely foggy, so it's hard to see this bridge at times. But it's funny, because Pentagon went from saying the enemy is gonna destroy it, to make it so obvious that everybody sees it. All this going back and forth takes 9 years and we get to 1929. The bridge hasn't even started yet and the Great Depression just started. As you know, the Great Depression started in 1929 and it went all the way to World War II. It was a terrible time for everyone in the world around this time, especially Europe. Even though everybody was poor and hungry and everybody needed a job, the city of San Francisco believed that they had to build this bridge because it's very important to the city's economy. A lot of people said we don't have money, 
but the city said we'll get a loan for it. They start talking with the Massachusetts Bank, which is known as the Bank of America now. In the year 1929, they successfully got a $35 million loan to build this bridge. And it's funny because the city of San Francisco paid this off in 1971. The ferry companies hear this news and they try to slow down this project once again. All this stuff makes the project delayed for four more years. And eventually, on the January of 1933, the first part of the job begins. The design was to begin the first main posts. These two posts are considered towers. Each of them weighs about 22,000 tons. And its height is 227 meters. And that means each of them is about as high as a 70 story building. The way the bridge was designed, that these two posts are supposed to hold the entire weight of the bridge. It's insane. That's one mile worth of bridge held up by two posts. To build the bases, they would have to build a port all the way to the base so they can take the workers and the equipment they need. But it seems like they underestimated the ocean they were standing on because the ports were destroyed two times by the waves of the ocean. The ports were temporary, but the actual towers were built very properly. And that's not only because of the ocean, it's because San Francisco is prone to earthquakes. You could say they went above and beyond in building these two towers because of the earthquake problem. It takes two years just to build these two towers. It's good to know that when this bridge is being built, the ferry companies have not given up yet and they're still giving false information to the people. But the job was continuing to go well. After the tower, the main problem is the cables, and it's the cables that hold up the bridge. This bridge is made up of 27,572 different cables, and if you put them right next to each other, that's 130,000 kilometers, and that means you could go around the earth three times with the cables. Building this bridge was very dangerous for the workers because it's a place that has 40 mile an hour winds and you're always working at an unbelievable height, about 200 meters high. After the main cable is run, that's the thick one, there are gonna be smaller cables that hold up the platform of the bridge. Just like we said, it's during the Great Depression and jobs are very hard to find. The workers that worked on this bridge were considered very lucky because they had a job. Unemployment rate was so high back then that people would stand in line just for people to fall off the bridge and they could have a job. It's good to know that if you fall off this bridge, you will for sure die. And when someone dies, someone has to get rehired on the spot. At that time, Tens of people fell off this bridge and died, and new workers were rehired. But this is in a way where there were a lot of people waiting in line to get hired every day. When the job was finished, the workers had to apply an orange anti-rust paint to the bridge so the metal doesn't rust, and they were deciding on what color to paint it. The anti-rust made the bridge look good, and the people of San Francisco actually thought this was the real paint. The Pentagon, or the Department of War, was happy about the color as well because it could be easily seen. And that's why this color was chosen for the Golden Gate Bridge. There are always workers painting the Golden Gate Bridge because when they get to the end, they have to restart from the start of the bridge. An insane amount of humidity hit this bridge and a lot of salt from the ocean. And if they don't take care of it, it will rust and it will rust quickly. To connect the pieces together, more than 600,000 rivets were used because all the metal was connected with rivets, not welding or nuts and bolts. On the 27th of May 1937, the bridge that was considered impossible to build was ready. The people of San Francisco are very thankful that this bridge was built because not only is it the symbol of San Francisco, it's a huge tourist attraction. You might not believe it, but yearly 26 million people visit San Francisco 
and one of the main areas they want to look at is the Golden Gate Bridge. And most of them want to walk on the bridge because both sides has a sidewalk. But on the sides, there is nets to stop suicides. But unfortunately, it doesn't stop everybody because some people have gotten through. So who takes care of this bridge? There are 110 employees and their job is to keep this bridge up to date. Some of them just look at the rivets. Some people are just painting. Some people are inspecting the cables. These people work here full time just for the bridge. This is a story of a bridge that was considered impossible, but it was possible. And that's at a time where everybody thought it's the end of the world. This bridge is about 85 years old now, and it's now considered a historical landmark. 